Softmax is a combination of me plus. Okay, let us see, we will learn today what is Softmax about. So, this is what we learn. Then we learn about how do you calculate cost functions. There are three, most probably you saw three, three versions. One is FNC, it's called mean square. You know what is FNC? What is MSC? Anyone? What is MSC? Mean square? Mean square? This is calculus loss. Basically, it's error calculation. So, MSC mean square error. Then, binary cross entropy. Right? You might have learned that. Today you are going to learn multi cross entropy using soft maps. See, see the difference. I would like you to do trial and error. You see the difference between binary cross entropy and multi cross entropy. Then followed by our future features is scaling. Most probably we did with scale up. So there is another way, this is normalization, but to calculate the min and max. Right? So, most probably normalization is not done yet, but you should know about the standardization, the standard scale up, and based on that, the gradient descent. How do you do forward propagation? Calculate the loss, then backward propagation with respect to the corresponding weights and biases, the input weights and biases. So don't worry, there is uh, this one is mind, mind graph, and this will be given to you. Don't worry. So you have a single hand picture of what you learned till now. Okay. So this is one. Now, what data set we did, we did use? I this data set absolutely. So where did we get I this data set from? Where did we get I this data set from? Where did we download it? Yes, there is a learning library called as sklearn. It is inbuilt for learning. And basically, it is used for learning classification tasks. To estimate the classification task. So basically, what is the input for this model? There are four features. One is the length, width of the mill, and petals, length and width. There are four features. Using those features, our goal is to effectively distinguish between the species. So this data set contains 150 records of three different species. The data of these three different species. Okay? So our goal to create a model is if I give this inputs, I should get based on input either one of these species. It should predict. If this is generally called as classifying based on the features. So this is what our goal was. Last session, this was our goal. So to achieve this goal, so you see how many nodes can we create for input? Four, because there are four features, four levels, right? And output, three. Input should have four, output should be three. So Based on our trial and error model, you define how many hidden layers you can use. So that is up to the accuracy of the model. That tells the accuracy of the model. Basically, you are going to design this. Last class, you started this. Four features. With that, here we are going to use two layers. You can use three hidden layers or four layers based on the accuracy output. So here we are going to use two hidden layers. And of course, the output layer should have three nodes to classify the output based on the result. Okay, this is what you are doing last session. This is a pictorial representation how you will represent your data set and how the model, what you are building. This is where it's called as multi level. Multi level neuron. You see, the multi levels, there are three levels in there. One is hidden layer 1, second is hidden layer 2, and third is output 2. 
Input layer is not considered as a uh, node specially. This is called as placeholder of the node, which does not have any calibrated parameter. Okay? Next. So what we did? What we did is first, we imported our libraries that we did the last class. Followed by, what you did? You just loaded your data set from sklearn and use one encoding, one hot encoding which is very basic, very important encoding mechanism to improve the performance from any categorical representation, zeros and ones that you saw. Then what we did? We just split it, our data, the data set into training and test followed by the standard scalar standardization, what we did. Because uh, if you see the data set, why don't we show the data set here. So, there is a variation of the values. So, we want to standardize those values. So, either we use normalization technique or standardization. We prefer for classifying tasks or classification tasks, standardization is more preferable. Okay, this is what we did. And then, what we did is, initializing the parameters. This is the parameter that you have initialized. Okay? I don't know how many of you have initialized it, but we will repeat that particular exercise now. This is what we did. What we are going to do today, most probably, we are going to do step 6, defining the activation function. Probably if you see uh, the node, so what we are doing is, you see the hidden layers are using sigmoid, whereas output layer we are using softmax. The combination of two activation functions to improve the accuracy level for the output layer, we use soft, softmax. You see here, we are, for the last one, we are going to use softmax. For hidden layer 1 and 2, we are going to use sigmoid. Okay? So that is what? So you are going to learn how to define those activation layers sigmoid and uh, softmax followed by the forward propagation of two hidden layers. Previously you learned with one hidden layer, uh, two hidden layers. So that is a layer, uh, that is just a pictorial representation, what mathematical representation or the coding representation that we should get. Then forward propagation. After that, then you are going to train it. There is a for loop or for each, for epochs. So most probably please use only two epochs. If you can find 100 epochs, I think uh, you, your system will hang. So maximum is two epochs. So we are going to do this two epochs to update the parameters. And then we are going to make predictions and evaluate the model. See the accuracy. Uh, I'm afraid I want at least at least 30% because we are working in the box. 25 to 30%, I would, I would uh, check that out. Most of it is 25 to 30%. Okay? So, now I'm just going to hand over to Madam. She's going to talk about the activity that we are going to do. Okay? The steps. Step 6. If she will repeat the fifth step also if you are not done. Initialization of parameters, then followed by all the following steps. Okay? Any questions here till now? Any questions here? Good morning, everyone. So, till now, you people have seen uh, how many number of hidden layers, like uh, you people have trained your model uh, if the classes are two, that is binary classification. I would like to know how many number of hidden layers you have used. How many number of hidden layers you people have used, guys? Please respond. Only one. Now, in multi-layer, what we are going to do is, we are going to increase the number of hidden layers. Why do we have to increase the number of hidden layers? Any idea? What happens if we add more number of hidden layers in between? Yes, please. 
what happens if we add more number of hidden layers? Our model, if we add more number of hidden layers, our model would be able to uh, learn more data, uh, uh, sorry, more number of complex patterns that are hidden in our data. Understand? So, if at all we increase number of hidden layers, the accuracy, the accuracy of our model would be increased. So, that is the reason we add more number of hidden layers. So, in general, you people have used only one hidden layer. Now, let us start with adding another hidden layer. Previous, uh, in general, we have shown only one to two hidden layers. But, in general, in a complex uh, neural network, you will have n number of hidden layers, guys. Like, you can just assume it as our brain, how all the neurons are interconnected. It's a very complex network. There will be many, many number of hidden layers. Now, tell me, how do you... Uh, for example, now I have hidden layer, sorry, first let us assume I have an input layer, then hidden layer, then hidden layer, hidden layer 1, hidden layer 2 and my output layer. Now, how do you decide how many number of input neurons should be present based upon the data set that you have? I request everyone to please open your data sets. Please open your data set and tell me how many number of uh, features are present in that particular data set. Yes, please. How many number of features are present? Four. What are they? Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. Based upon these four attributes or the features, we are going to uh, classify them. Like if it is iris setosa, versicolor or virginica. Am I right? So, now tell me how many number of input neurons should be present. Four. Input neurons should be four. Now, output neurons should be? It depends upon the number of classes. How many number of classes we have? Three. For example, uh, let me just give you four classes. Cat, dog, horse, bat and... Uh, uh, okay. Okay, cat, horse, dog... Uh, uh, something watch and a mic now tell me how many number of output neurons would be present five so it basically depends upon how many number of how many number of output classes we have but what it happens in a binary classification in binary classification do we use two output neurons only one output neuron if it is one or zero but we have multiple classes right so how many number of classes are there that many number of output neurons would be present. Now, let me just give you a quick overview like what you have done. Uh, now, you have understood what is multiple, multi-class and multi-layer. So, the more only point is so as to improve the accuracy, we are adding up this hidden layers. Now, what is our aim? This is already done. I am just giving you a quick overview or a recap. So, based upon the features, I would like to predict which class that particular uh, data belongs to. Now, the first step you have done is, you have imported all the necessary libraries. You have imported NumPy, you have split the data, standard scalar is also done. Can I get a quick yes, standard scalar is also done? Yes. Now, we have just loaded the data by making use of sklearn library. Now, tell me, here you people have used one hot encoding. How many types of encoding techniques are there? How many number of encoding techniques are there? We have label encoding and one hot encoding. Any difference between one hot encoding and label encoding? Do you know what is label encoding and one hot encoding? Dear audience? Yes. Let me just tell you the difference between label encoding and one hot encoding. So, when we use label encoding and when do we use one hot encoding? So, if at all, I have something like, if my classes are something like this, BTEC, PhD, Intermediate, SSC. Now, uh, now I would like to ask you, if at all uh, some uh, faculty has come for an interview, 
the first category that would be given priority is PhD candidate, am I right? So, can we rank them? So, can we rank them? PhD is given first priority, MTech is given second priority, BTech would be given third priority and uh, uh, intermediate would be given fourth. So, based upon that, I am able to rank them. If at all, my data, my classes, if at all I am able to rank them, I will be able to use label encoding. So, in our data set, I have three classes. What are the three classes? I request you to please respond. This should be an interactive session. Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. So, can we rank them, guys? Can we rank them? Is there any category? Well, like I can categorize this particular, I can give this uh, particular set of into rank 1, rank 2, rank 3. I cannot do that. So that is the reason I am using one hot encoding. Hope you people have already done one hot encoding. Here what I am doing, if I have three classes, uh, for example, if I have some IDs like, uh, colors like red, green, blue. So red will be given, okay, red will be given 100, green would be given 010 blue would be given 001 that is nothing but wherever I have that category that would be one others would be zeros that is what we are doing in one hot encoding if at all I have three classes this would be divided like this if I have four classes then it would be 0100 0, 0. okay so this is what is one hot encoding we have imported the data set then why are we doing this encoding the output category column contains categories so, can my machine understand these categories? If I directly give Virginica, Versicolor and all, my machine won't be understanding it. I have to encode it so that my machine understands because it understands only numerical values. Clear? Clear up to here? Can I get a quick yes from everybody? Yes. Now, we have one hot encoded the data. I have just passed uh, one hot encoding. Just one hot encoding of y comma number of classes based upon the number of classes you give that. Now, hope this is already done. So, a one hot encoding is done. Then, I will split the data. So, I have some 100 samples. I will split my data to training and testing set. For example, if my test size is 0 0.2, it implies 20 percent of my data is given to testing. 80 percent of my data is given to training. What is the significance of random state here? Significance of random state here? So, if at all you specify a random state, random state is equals to 42, it basically implies that now I have 80 samples in my training data, 20 samples in my testing data. What happens is in the first iteration, first iteration, first 10 records, okay? I am splitting. So, we are making sure all the 20, 20 samples in the testing data should be same each and every time I run. Okay. Each and every time I run, my testing samples should be same. If I make this random state as 42, all my testing samples will be same for all the iterations. So, the main reason we are fixing this random state is so as to avoid data leakage. Am I right? So, as to avoid data leakage. So, we, are, we have to make sure whenever I am training my model, building my model, I have to make sure my model should not have any information. It can be standard deviation, mean or any information about my testing data. That is the reason we are fixing this uh, random state is equals to 42 so that my uh, training data or the model will not know any information about my testing data. Then we are standardizing. So, why do we have to standardize the features? What do you understand by scaling? What do you understand by scaling? How many of them have used graphs? So, in that you will be using 1 uh, centimeter is equals to 10 units and all. For example, I have weight, param weight parameters. Let us assume a data set. I am calculating BMI of a person where my input features are uh, just weight and height BMI. BMI is my output column, input features are my weight and height. Weight is calculated in cages, height is calculated in centimeters. 
So, so as to standardize those data, we use standardization. For example, 1 centimeter would be 10 units and 1 kg would be 10 units. So, all this will be standardized. So, whenever I am saying standardization, what are we calculating here? What are the scaling parameters that you people are calculating here? Any idea? What are the scaling parameters that you are calculating guys? Mean. Mean and standard deviation. Am I right? What are the scaling parameters you people are calculating? Mean and standard deviation of that particular data samples. Okay? Now, we have uh, splitted our data and we have got the samples X train, X test, Y train and Y test. Then we are standardizing the data so as to make sure all the features would be in one scale. Okay? So, now uh, we have taken variable scalar, then I have fitted it to my X train and I have transformed my X test. Now, tell me guys as you have completed this, why do we use X train, sorry fit transform for my training data and transform for my testing data? Why you people, why didn't you use fit transform for your test data as well? You can use right, why did you use fit transform for your training data and only transform for your testing data over here? Please respond. Please respond, yes. Now, fit transform. What is fit? Whenever I am saying scalar dot fit, it basically implies that I am calculating the scaling parameters. What are the scaling parameters mean and my standard deviation of that particular data? Now, tell me if I have 80 samples in my data, okay. In my training set, I have 80 samples. And in my testing set, I have 20 samples. Is the mean of training set and mean of testing set would be same? No, obviously. No? Please make, make this point. Okay. Then let's move forward. Fit is nothing but I am just calculating the scaling parameters. That is mean and standard deviation of my data. I am transforming it. Okay. Whatever are the calculations I have done. I have transforming my data in that particular scale, okay. I will be calculating mean and standard deviation, right. I would be applying this to my data so that all would be standardized in that scale, okay. Now we have calculated all the scaling parameters. Now we have to make sure we have to use transform for the testing. Why do we use only transform for testing is we have already calculated scaling parameters for training data. We don't have to calculate them again for testing data because we have to make sure all the data should be standardized to the same scale because the data training set or the testing set belongs to one data set, right? Am I right? It belongs to one data set. So, we have to make sure complete data should be standardized to a single scale as we have already calculated our scaling parameters in the training uh, data. I am not calculating it, I am just transforming it so that there will be data consistency, okay. There will be fair relationship, okay, data consistency. So, as to maintain data consistency, we do this. Hope you are clear. Okay, let me just take an analogy. Uh, like if at all you go uh, for a tailor, he will just take the measurements. Taking measurements is nothing but fitting, okay. If at all you use fit underscore transform, it implies that after taking measurements, he is stitching your cloth based upon your measurements is fit underscore transform. Based upon the measurements he has taken, he is tailoring it. Okay, that is fit underscore transform. Fit is he is just taking the measurements. Now transform is uh, already we have the fit of the training data. That is scalar parameters of the uh, training set. That is the reason we are using just a transform. He is just tailoring it. Okay, hope uh, you have already done this. Now, the next step is we have to initialize weights and biases. Previously, what you people were doing? A one input layer, one hidden layer and a output layer. Now, what you people have to do? You have to 
add another input layer, uh, sorry, hidden layer over here. Let me just... Uh, Simplicity, I have used X, uh, that only one input layer, that implies it's a layer, not a single neuron. Four bank layer. Now, input layer. And then I have hidden layer one, then hidden layer two, and my output layer. Now, from hidden layer one to hidden, uh, sorry, from X to hidden layer one, okay? Input to hidden layer, what are the parameters that you people have to calculate? You people have already done this for one hidden layer, right? Right, that would be same. Here you people have to calculate weights underscore input underscore hidden one, bias underscore hidden one. Am I right? From input layer to hidden layer, you people have to calculate weights and the bias. Weights and bias of input layer to hidden layer one. Yes? In first input to hidden layer, you people have to calculate these two parameters. Weights underscore input underscore hidden one and bias underscore hidden one. Now from hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 also, there are multiple interconnections, am I right? So we each and every connection would be having its own weight and bias. So how do we calculate that? So we have, we have to calculate weights underscore, weights underscore hidden 1 underscore hidden 2 and I have to calculate bias underscore hidden 2. And then from hidden layer 2 to output layer, we have to calculate weights underscore hidden to underscore output and the bias output. So, for forward propagation, we basically have to calculate all these parameters which are in blue color. Blue color, you are supposed to calculate. Am I right? So, before I calculate and update them, I have to initialize them. Okay? How do we initialize them? We have to initialize them randomly. Okay, we use rand function random dot random for initializing the weights. For bias, we are putting them to zeros. Am I right? So I request everyone to please open your laptops and do this. Can you turn on the task? Initialize. As you people have already done this for uh, one hidden layer, I request you to start. I have given you the parameters what to calculate. In hidden uh, input to hidden layer one, you people have to calculate two parameters. That is weights and biases. Weight of input layer to hidden layer one, and then bias of hidden layer one. I request you to please open and do it. Everything would be same. You just have to change the variable names. The formula is inputs into biases, sorry is it inputs into biases, correct right input into bias, please respond inputs into bias, inputs into weights plus bias, please do that. I request you to please calculate all those uh, six parameters, I will showcase the code after uh, 5 to 10 minutes but I request you to initialize the parameters as you people already have idea. Whatever you people have done for uh, one hidden layer, you just can copy and change the uh, variable names guys. You just have to add another two extra parameters from hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2. How many of them have completed up to splitting and standardization? Can you please raise your hands? If you have completed that, you will be able to do the next step, right? Okay, how many of them have completed? You people have to pass four parameters, am I right? Is that you people have passed for this weight initialization, input size, hidden size, hidden size one, hidden size. Here we have two hidden sizes because we have two hidden layers, am I right? See here, we have to pass input size, hidden size 1 and hidden size 2 and output size. So, the first thing is I am fixing the random seed uh, so that there won't be, it is basically used for reproducibility and whenever you use rand function, each and every time you run the rand function, it will be produ producing different output. So, as to fix that, each and every time I run 
like for each and every iteration it should be same that is the reason we are using random seed then what we have to do i have to initialize my weights like weights and biases from input to hidden layer 1 input to hidden layer 1 what are the parameters input to hidden layer 1 inputs uh, weights underscore input underscore hidden 1 as well as bias underscore hidden 1 that is what we are calculating from input to hidden layer 1 so what are we doing i am just using rand function i am passing input size and the hidden size 1 into 0.01 i am just calculating the weights initializing the weights using random function so from input to hidden 1 i have to use input size and hidden size 1 in the same way for first hidden layer to second hidden layer first hidden layer to second hidden layer we have to pass hidden size 1 and hidden size 2 and the bias is bias underscore hidden 2 np dot zeros of 1 comma hidden size 2 you people have done this i am just adding a hidden layer in between previously you people have done input to hidden layer hidden layer to output layer here now it goes like input to hidden layer 1 then hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 then hidden layer 2 to output layer so you people have to calculate or initialize these six parameters then after we are done with uh, from hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 we have to calculate for hidden layer 2 to output layer and then from hidden layer 2 to output layer we have to pass hidden layer 2 size as well as output size this is how we initialize done with initialization of all the parameters six parameters if number of hidden layers increases these parameters also increases just see the complexity of the network if i have four hidden layers tell me how many number of parameters to be calculated if i have four hidden layers how many number of parameters to be initialized in this step only 8 just calculate each and every step you have to is it 12 yes hope you people are done with this step now we are done with initializing the weights and biases next step is we have to define what are the different types of activation functions that we have to use and also the loss functions am i right so in the network whenever i am adding some hidden layer what are the parameters that are going to change if at all i have uh, like previously if binary classification what is the activation function that you people have used sigmoid sigmoid for regression kind of problems what you people have used activation function relu is the activation function for binary sigmoid for multi class classification what should be used softmax why softmax is used now tell me in the hidden layers like each and every layer will have n number of neurons am i right hidden layer 1 have neurons hidden layer 2 will have neurons and output will also have neurons now tell me each and should i use softmax function in all the layers no from hidden layer 1 i'll be using sigmoid as the activation function hidden layer 2 also sigmoid in general sigmoid or relu can be used there is no hard and fast rule like this should be used in the hidden layer like based upon the accuracy and all you can actually change it to relu or sigmoid okay so in general in hidden layer sigmoid or relu is used and in the output layer we have to concentrate on the output layer what activation function should be used we are using softmax as the activation function softmax activation function is basically defined by e par z by summation of e par z so uh, here how many classes i have in this particular data set guys how many classes we have three classes now tell me uh, let me just uh, give you an analogy like this let uh, let us assume there are 300 students over here now i am taking a poll 
uh, of five movies okay five movies i'll just give you five movies like based upon your interest and all you will basically poll like which movie you like the most okay movie one movie two movie three movie four movie five okay now uh, let us assume 10 students have opted for movie one 20 opted for movie two and some 50 opted for movie three okay based upon your interest you people have given the poll okay now i would like to know the probability i would like to know the probability which movie is chosen more which movie is chosen more so so as to do that we use probability am i right so what is the movie which is chosen by the students more is basically calculated by probability that is what we are doing in softmax activation function after we get the logits logits are nothing but calculations of all the z and uh, a output calculations we are passing this to a activation function see here i have a neural network i'm passing my training data okay so after i calculate all of them uh, like output would be the final output would be a out see the output i get is a underscore out final output after forward i'm just talking about forward propagation a out this a out would be actually this is actually called logits okay this logits are given to softmax activation function that is nothing but what are these logits no you people 10 people have chosen movie 1 20 people have chosen movie 2 right all those calculations would be given to softmax activation function where we get the probabilities probabilities of each and every class here i have three classes that is uh, i'll be getting three probabilities for example the output of this uh, softmax activation function should would be 0 0.28 comma uh, 0 0.78 comma something 0 0.1 okay now based upon these three we can actually say class 2 whichever is having the highest probability okay let me just repeat this again the output of the softmax function would be probabilities okay output of softmax activation function would be probabilities that is nothing but all the three classes whenever we sum all the probabilities of these three classes that would be one guys okay now 0 0.2 comma 0 0.7 comma 0 0.1 okay the output is 0 0.2 comma 0 0.7 comma 0 0.1 now tell me what is the most preferable class over here as the probability of the second class is more probability of the second class is more that would be the output understand so that is what our softmax activation function is doing it is basically giving you the probabilities so in uh, hidden layers we are using relu or sigmoid and in output we are using softmax activation function now loss function okay first uh, please define these uh, activation functions i request you to please define you have the formula of this softmax activation function also i request you to please define sigmoid activation function as well as softmax activation function just write activation function guys sigmoid sigmoid derivative and softmax activation function i think you people already have code of sigmoid and sigmoid derivative you just have to add softmax activation function don't submit just write okay you can submit after you complete forward propagation now let us complete uh, doing this activation function then uh, like writing function for categorical cross entropy then forward propagation okay this is what we do for sigmoid activation function this is how we define sigmoid the formula of sigmoid is 1 by 1 uh, 1 by 1 plus e power minus x and its derivative and softmax e power z by summation of e power z that is what we are returning for the softmax activation function completed defining the activation function everybody please look at the code if you have written the same thing 
please don't submit right now let us define categorical cross entropy as well then forward propagation then you people can submit yeah there are a simple question here do you, do you think uh, softmax will have a negative valuation how many of you say softmax can have a negative value based on the expression that you saw definitely since it is exponential whatever power of if it is a negative power you will not have any negative values particularly it will be softmax it is from 0 to so 1 to video to 0 so there is no negative values and here you are just negating with the highest number because you see the denominator sum of exponential value so always you are referring to the highest number and then you are trying to get the features out of it but the sum of all the probabilities of all the classes should be 1 if at all I have 5 classes probability of all the individual 5 classes it would be equal to 1. Yes. Now let us move on to here if at all if it is a multi-class classification we are using categorical cross entropy. Categorical cross entropy. This is basically uh, given by the formula minus 1 by n summation j is equals to 1 to n summation i is, uh, i is equals to 1 to k yij log of yij cap plus some epsilon. Here yij is nothing but my actual value, okay, yij cap is my predicted value, yij is my actual y value, yij cap is my predicted value. Here n is nothing but the number of samples in the batch, the total number of samples in the batch, k is equals to number of classes, okay, k is equals to number of classes. Yij is the true label for class i for the sam jth sample. Class i for the jth sample. Yij cap is the predicted probability of the class i for the jth sample. Epsilon is nothing but uh, some constant. We basically use this so as to avoid 0. So as to make sure the loss is not 0. If the loss is 0, if the loss is 0, what does that imply? If loss is 0, your accuracy is 100%. In general, the loss will not be 0. So, as to make sure as we have logarithmic value, so as to make sure it should not be 0, that is the reason we are adding some constant here. Another question here, how many of you can easily visualize this mathematical expression and convert into a Python program. How many of you are able to do on your own? Only two people. This is very important. If there is a mathematical expression, you need to write in to Python code. If you don't have that analysis and how to approach, I would recommend in ES lab set open any kind of log tutorials here. If I request Asha or Madam to give a reference speak also so that you can just see how we control that. It's a beautiful video set. If you just follow up three brown, three blue and three brown, there is a video tutorial, you'll be you'll be understanding easily. So please, this is very important for visualizing and converting a mathematical expression to a binary program. Either it may be a quadratic equation or a linear equation. So please do that. This will be helpful for you. Anyhow, Madam is giving away the answers since you know, she doesn't want you to struggle. She wants you to struggle for forward propagation. Right? So, good luck. So categorical cross entropy, as we are using softmax as the activation function in the output layer, it is very uh, good if we use categorical cross entropy because here uh, also as we are taking in softmax activation function, we are taking the probabilities. Here also we are taking the probability distributions. That is the reason for multi-class classification we use categorical cross entropy. I request you to please uh, try to write the formula or so. So now how do we compute the loss? So what are the parameters 
whenever forward propagation after forward propagation we have to compute the loss i have the actual value and i have the predicted value based upon the different loss functions we have different formulas here we have categorical cross entropy as it is multi class classification this is how the formula is written minus np dot mean of np dot sum of y true into np dot log of predicted value adding some epsilon value axis is equals to 1 whenever i say axis is equals to 1 that implies we are doing it for each and every row axis is equals to 1 we are doing it for each and every row it implies we are doing this calculation for each and every sample in our data set okay i am passing the i am passing this uh, values one by one and calculating the loss for each and every sample i'll be having the loss and at last i'm summing them i'm taking the average that is the reason i have used mean why we have used mean i'm taking the average of all the losses that we have got from all the samples this is how we are calculating the loss that is nothing but categorical cross entropy now tell me we have uh, defined activation function and we already have defined uh, uh, loss also now what is the next step next step forward propagation now in forward propagation what are the parameters that we get okay now we have to perform forward propagation so i request you to use sigmoid as the activation function for the hidden layers and softmax as the activation function for the output layer please implement this uh, forward propagation the parameters are what do we pass to this forward propagation my x that is not nothing but my input weights underscore input underscore hidden one bias underscore hidden one weights underscore hidden one underscore hidden two bias underscore hidden two weights underscore hidden two output bias and bias underscore output these are all the parameters that you people have initialized am i right you people have initialized them after initialization what you just have to do what are the two operation that happens in the activation function what are the two operation that happens in the activation function first you have to multiply this inputs into weights plus biases that simple operation you are supposed to do in this uh, uh, forward propagation initialization is done now you have to calculate the outputs of each and every layer x into w plus bias for each and every layer you have to calculate for each and every layer see from uh you have to calculate a underscore hidden one z underscore hidden one a underscore hidden two z underscore hidden two a underscore output you people have to calculate a underscore hidden one z underscore hidden one a underscore hidden two z underscore hidden two a underscore output z underscore output so what is z guys z is nothing but x into w plus b x into w plus b that would be your z underscore hidden one a is nothing but after applying activation function on the z output yes after applying activation function on the z z output you will be getting a for one hidden layer you people have already done this just add another hidden layer in between z and a for each and every layer 
Please calculate them. We will have to pass these parameters. Uh, in the code, I think it's not modified. We haven't mentioned hidden 1 and hidden 2. I request you to please take this. Which has hidden 1 and hidden 2. Okay. Please concentrate here. Please take these parameters. These parameters you will be passing to forward propagation. I request you to please make a note of it so that I can uh, showcase you what are the output parameter variables. Yes? I request you to please uh, make a note of them. What are the parameters you people have to pass? You already have it because you have already initialized, right? You initialized all the six parameters. You people will be having this, but fine. I request you to please make a note of it. Then I will be showcasing you the output variables. I'll just give you one minute. Please uh, note them. Now the outputs will be. Okay. Now the outputs in the power propagation you people have to calculate. Z underscore hidden 1. A underscore hidden 1. Z underscore hidden 2. A underscore hidden 2. Z underscore output. A underscore output. Hope I am clear. The input parameters to be passed and what are the uh, variables that should be returned from this forward function. You can actually see the parameters over here. A underscore hidden and Z underscore hidden 1. A underscore hidden 2. Z underscore hidden 2. A underscore output as well as Z underscore output. You will be returning these parameters for this function forward. Yes, uh, this will be our last exercise for today. So, uh, the gradings will be till 11.15. So, I'll make sure that you submit by 11.15. If you have any queries, questions, please call us. Right? And uh, once at 11.15 we we'll close it, gradings will be stopped. Again, it will be reopened tomorrow where you can really practice. No gradings. Yes, uh, I think more Two minutes, we are going to close down. And we will reopen tomorrow or day after tomorrow again so that you can practice, see the output of your mode combination.